So we really have two big points today. The first one is this, a scriptural overview. Like, I don't want you to think this is just a TED Talk or this is just podcast. Uh, this is just someone sharing their opinions. Like, the Bible has a lot to say about this. And the first thing the Bible tells us is that God himself is a creator. Look in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Genesis 1, 1 tells us this. In the beginning, now when we say beginning there, we mean when God is going to establish time because God has always been, there's never been a time that God was not. But then God's going to create. In the beginning, God does what? He created. Another term there could be the term work. God created. He worked so that the heavens and the earth could be formed. I think sometimes we forget that in the very first verse of Scripture, God is at work. So this scriptural overview, one of the things we're going to see this morning is that God is a worker. The fact that God calls what he did when he created work and that he also calls that good means this. Work is significant. It's a significant part of who God is and, and therefore it should be significant in what we do. It has intrinsic value. So when God opens up the scenes of Genesis 1 for us, what is he doing? God is working. Creator God is making the moon, the sun, the stars. And I love when the Bible describes how God made the stars. It's almost as if he forgot, right? Like the moon and the stars. And Oh, oh yeah, I threw the stars out there. Uh, oh, oh, I would have led with that, right? Like how amazing. But it was nothing in the work of of God. He's calling things into existence. He's creating the oceans, the land, the birds, and the animal. He speaks, and the world explodes into color, and it takes shape and form and fashion. Did you realize 12 times in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, God is described as one who is working by creating by making, by forming, fashioning, and planting. Genesis 2, 2 says this. By the seventh day, God had what? Finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, God rested from all his, what's the key word? From his work, right? So according to Genesis 2, how many days did God work? Or six, if you wanted to participate this month. I, I hope over in the West. Uh, I, I, I think I heard a few voices through the different uh, doors there. Uh, how many days, according to Genesis 2, did God work? Six. Man, you guys are the smart crowd. And, and then what did God do on the seventh day? God what? Rested. There we go, right? But watch this. When did God rest? Oh, and this is where we go. Hang on. Trick question. Did God rest because it was the seventh day? No. When did God rest? He rested when the work was what? Completed. When he completed the work. Uh, Pastor Chris and I spent a lot of time together. Matter, matter of fact, a lot of people ask us about our relationship. But the thing I would tell you is, uh, much like what we did in parenting, we just spent a lot of time together. And we talk a lot. And, and we were talking about this disconnect. Because a lot of people, my generation and especially older, a lot of those over in our West Auditorium, we call them our senior saints. Uh, a, a lot of us can get caught up in uh, worshiping work. Like well, you can find your identity in your work. As a matter of fact, very guilty of if somebody takes a day off or if they take a vacation. When they come back, everyone's like, oh, who's the new guy? Who's the new girl? Oh, welcome back. Do you work here? And it's like, uh, that's absolutely wrong, by the way. Like, that's not biblical. And then Chris, and by the way, I was the one who was bringing that to the table. And so uh, Chris brings to the table, well, JJ, here's the issue, though, with, with the generation below you, right? Like, we just worship Sabbath. 
You know, you, man, you, he goes, you've never heard Sabbath mentioned more in the last few years than you've ever heard. Like, and I can tell you, it, growing up, I never heard a message on Sabbath. No, no one talked about Shabbat. Like, what are you speaking of, right? But here's the thing. We have a generation today that doesn't want to complete the work. But, man, do they want a Sabbath. And I would tell you this. That's also wrong, right? What, did, what happened? God worked. He completed the work, and then God enjoyed the rest. He enjoyed the Sabbath. Now, I would tell you, you've got to be careful on both sides. Because, again, a lot of you in here, you know, laugh. I promise you, in the next service, when we have a lot of young adults, they're going to kind of look at this first part of that like, oh, man, yeah, my, my parents, my grandparents, work was their idol. It was their, matter of fact, that's why I don't work. Because mom and dad were always at work. And one of the things, by the way, parenting, I know that was last week. Uh, but one of the geniuses, genius things that Sharon did, uh, because I am a pastor, right? Um, she, she always made sure that she separated work and church. So if the boys ever said, hey, where's dad? She didn't say dad's at church. Dad goes to church on Sunday, like everybody else, but she would always say, Dad's at work, right? And, and, and you need to understand, there's a difference between Sabbath and working. And both of those can be done in harmony, but both of those need to be done in a way that glorify the Lord. Uh, not only did God work, but Jesus worked. You know, we don't have a lot of information about Jesus from the age of 12 until he's 30, except for this. Uh, we understand that he would have been in his father's business. Uh, the translation is carpenter. Most of us probably think of working with wood, but more than likely, that's like a stonemason, somebody who would have worked with rocks, that type of material. And so Jesus showed that not only is physical work necessary, but Jesus even taught us that physical work is good, but he also modeled an attitude of work by fulfilling the work that he was called to do. And let's just deviate for a moment. Look at John 17. Jesus is praying, and in verse 4, he says this, and he's praying to his Father in heaven, I have brought you glory on earth by what? Finishing the work you gave me to do. I had to finish. Now, notice what did God say? After he completed the work, after he finished the work, he rested. After Jesus has finished the work, what is he going to do? He's going to give up his body. He's going to allow it to rest. So whereas the first Adam made work very difficult, Jesus, who we refer to as the last Adam, through his work on the cross, he's made it possible for you and I to have a right relationship with God and also to change our attitude in regard to work so that we realize that it is a purpose. There's purpose for you working, that you can bring honor and glory just as Jesus is, said, I have brought you glory. And so the question we have to look is, in our work, could we pray the same prayer at the end of the day? God, today I brought you glory. In, in, in what you have called me to do, and remember what, well, well, what is that? Whatever, it doesn't matter. In whatever it is, I brought you glory, and I finished the work for the day. And so 